Where's to how I mean Freyond and welcome to another video. Please my friends look at the screen. They will never learn, will they? Just yesterday I made a video about the never-ending prequels and sequels and spin-offs and uh, remakes and the fact that some things should just remain untouched. There have also been mass media sites promoting the idea of the Lord of the Rings becoming a never-ending, milked-out, disgusting, dead franchise such as Marvel Cinematic Universe or Star Wars. And I was talking about uh, the clear differences between Tolkien's stories and such a thing as uh, the Marvel Comics or the MCU. And believe me, it is better when you don't milk out IPs. Because you can only mar, you can only destroy, and you can only twist and corrupt those things if you overuse them. And people will eventually become overfed by them. Well, it seems that Hollywood is not listening to the good old European law, because Jon Snow, Game of Thrones sequel, is in the works. Now, there are a couple of things to be said about that, but uh, let us first read the very short report by bleedingfool.com. I thank you, Bleeding Fool, for providing me with this news. <laughs> you know nothing about HBO's post-Game of Thrones plans. The network has entered into early development on its first sequel to its blockbuster fantasy drama, a live-action spin-off series centered on the fan-favorite character Jon Snow, the Hollywood Reporter says. Kit Harrington is attached to reprise the role should a series move forward. The actor was twice nominated for an Emmy for his portrayal of an action hero who struggles to uphold his family's noble values in a brutal world. In Thrones' eighth and final season, Jon Snow discovered his true name was Aegon Targaryen, a potential heir to the Iron Throne. In the series finale, he was exiled from Westeros and journeyed north of the Wall with the Wildlings to leave his old life behind. Since completing his work across eight seasons of Thrones, Harrington has appeared in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, co-starring in 2021's Eternals. He also recently starred in the title role in the National Theatre's live production of Henry the, uh, the Fifth. On Thrones, the actor was known for enduring some of the show's most grueling filming, including the final season's infamous 11 weeks of winter night shoots in Northern Ireland. The development signals an intriguing new direction in HBO's handling of author George R. R. Martin's fantasy universe. Again, they are making everything into a universe. Oh, that's a bad idea. It's not a good thing. It's actually the opposite of what they are saying. Everybody's, you know, all the shill media sites are saying uh, the Lord of the Rings is becoming a mass franchise and a universe, a multiverse, and that's a good thing. No, no, it's not, really. A move not unlike Disney Plus's management of its Star Wars and Marvel brands, where the streamer has found success launching character focused sequel series such as WandaVision starring Elizabeth Olsen as Wanda Maximoff and Obi-Wan Kenobi, with Ewan McGregor reprising his iconic role. Now, this development news means there are now seven Thrones projects in the works, in addition to the upcoming House of the Dragon prequel series, which debuts August the 21st. Dragon tells the story of a civil war within House Targaryen, and is set about 200 years before the events of Thrones. Now everything comes down to money, doesn't it? And it is all being done for money. Those corporations like HBO, and Amazon, Amazon Prime or Prime Video, whatever you want, you want to call it, they see uh, the massive financial success of the initial uh, run of Marvel Cinematic Universe movies and of course of the Star Wars franchise, which uh, is one of the biggest franchises in the history of uh, cinema and TV. Those films and those TV series are making a lot of money, even those uh, least, uh, you know, uh, successful are making a lot of money. And obviously, other huge companies and corporations and film studios want the same thing. 
So they are looking at, they are doing, you know, research. They are looking at those different things that are very popular and they say to themselves, we will do the same thing. We will make a lot of money. So if you belong among the people who are absolutely excited about the idea of a Song of Ice and Fire series becoming a huge mega franchise or the Lord of the Rings becoming a huge mega franchise and you are willing to consume <clears throat> everything they will put uh, in front of your nose. Uh, believe me, they are not doing it for you. Whatever they say. Now let us get back to a, uh, the uh, Rings of Power for a bit. The showrunners are apparently, allegedly, always saying we care about Tolkien, we care about the lore, we want to honor Tolkien. No, that's a pile of donkey manure, what, what these people are saying. Uh, they have proved they know absolutely nothing. They know even less than Jon Snow right here. All they want to do is to copy the success of MCU, copy the success of Game of Thrones. And uh, HBO is doing this, the same thing. They, they think they can uh, redo they can get back to the initial success of the Game of Thrones because it was massively successful. It was really the first massively successful huge fantasy TV show there was. It started it all. The Game of Thrones TV show based on a Song of Ice and Fire series by George R. R. Martin started this <coughs> massive fantasy franchise TV show thing. And what is the funniest about it is that it's not even bloody finished. The books, the saga of books upon which the Game of Thrones was based is not even finished. George R. R. Martin has still got two th books left to publish. He's old and I don't think he's going to finish them ever or publish them ever. And yet, still, they've got what they said is seven Game of Thrones projects in, in works. Because it is much more profitable in 2022 to make a TV show, to put it out there on a streaming service. Because a lot of consumers will just consume, brainlessly consume everything you will put before their eyes. How many people do you think will buy a book? How many people do you think will watch a shitty TV show? Oh, well, of course, that uh, there are more people who will watch a TV show than read a book. And that is the sad state of uh, entertainment in 2022. Everything is just done for money and things have been done for money always. But is this really, really strongly seen nowadays? Nobody, none of these creators, literally nobody cares about the, the work of art. And they don't care about you. They only care about money. They don't care about if we are satisfied with the final result, if they uh, are honoring the law, if they are honoring the source material. They just want to empty our wallets. And it is up to you, my friends, if you allow them to do so or not. So let me know in the comments down below if you are also tired of the never-ending spin-offs and milking of uh, already established IPs. If you would also like to just to go back, and I do often, to old things, enjoy them, unmarred, unspoiled, unchanged, with uh, no sequels, prequels in mind, and potentially, if there is something new that you would like to consume made today, well, it should be really new, original, absolutely not attached to anything that was done previously. And that will be all. Thank you very much for watching and I'm Marie.